this will go to the grassroots, regardless of who is president or who sits where. And that's why the Division of Revenue Bill comes to this floor every year. Mr. Speaker, this is the means through which we ensure that counties are funded and are funded well. Mr. Speaker, the government of the day has said that they want to ensure that the counties have resources regardless of where they belong politically. And, and, and that's why I want to thank the Honorable Ndindi, especially on his comments, that going forward, this parliament and Senate will ensure that, first of all, the money is approved, get down to the counties. Because, Mr. Speaker, that is what is causing problems now. That you sit here, approve monies to the counties, most of these monies are being taken to the counties very late June, July. And how I wish, Mr. Speaker, that how hard we fight to get our CDF to our counties, the constituencies, that's the way we fight for the counties to get the exchequers. Because, Mr. Speaker, these monies serve the public. And we, again, in our, in our wisdom as a country, decided to devolve things that are social, health, water, agriculture, Mr. Speaker, sports, culture, all these are devolved. And that's why I agree with my chair that, first of all, the monies we allocate to the counties are meaningless if they cannot go down to the counties on time. Mr. Speaker, number two, and again, most importantly, Mr. Speaker, is that going forward, a way must be found. I agree with Don Bumbui on this matter. That a way must be found for Senate and National Assembly and CRA every year again to agree we cannot keep talking at each other. We have one commission whose only job on earth, Mr. Speaker, the only job CRA has with seven commissioners on this earth is to set a formula. Now, if they cannot consult, they cannot talk to this house, they cannot talk to the Senate, and every year, that single thing they do, we disagree with it. Every year. That people are being paid for, salaries, cars, the only job is set up a formula, which we never use any time for the last 12 years. So we must do it differently. Our aim must be found to ensure that CRA works with both other bodies that make decisions. Mr. Speaker, if you look at this bill, and the last part of it, the list of reasons for disagreeing with CRA keep growing since I came to this fall in 2013. The first time the, the reasons for disagreeing were around three, four paragraphs. They have kept growing every year. And I think we need to bridge that gap, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that the kind of money we give the county is agreeable. We can't keep every year, Mr. Speaker, again, having to form mediation committees. As you know, we'll pass 385. Tomorrow, Senate will refuse. Then you have to set up a mediation committee. We get noise. Politics comes into it. A way must be formed, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that we, as decision-making bodies, this Assembly, Senate, CRA, and other bodies concerned can get consensus on this matter, Mr. Speaker. So, Speaker number three, most importantly, Mr. Speaker, is the issue of on-source revenue. We don't get to hear about it in, our, the, in this bill, Mr. Speaker. We don't get to, see, to hear how much CIA County raised on, on revenue. We don't get to hear how much CIA County Abusia County raised. In fact, we are told that in some counties, this money is raised in cash. It's not even visited. No one knows how much it is, Mr. Speaker. And that's why I was telling my chair this morning in the meeting that a way again must be found to ensure that this assembly, not just Senate, this assembly gets to know how much money did CIA raise in their own revenues? How much did Kisumu raise? How much did Nairobi raise every year so that even as we do these allocations, and as we talk about how government refuses to give them more money, we know how much are they raising in those counties? Which are these revenue measures that they're using, and where does the money go? So that even as we raise this money, Mr. Speaker, the counties have declared, and they go around saying that they are governments, which I agree with. If they're governments, they must also show us how are supposed to are they? What, how much are they raising every year? How are they supporting themselves as counties? Very important, Mr. Speaker. So that we get to know that along the way, these counties become sustainable units that can survive on their own. That is, that is what was meant at the end of the day, Mr. Speaker. Number three, Mr. Speaker, from where I sit, I also want to urge, again, this assembly, that if in case along the year, times become better and more monies are raised by the national government, Mr. Speaker, let's also get as a practice that if times become better and there's more money at the national government level, we're able to again send some more down regardless of how much we raise today. If, for example, along the year, the economy grows, 
the KRS rebook left more money, and we realize that the government is raising more, then there's nothing harmful, there's nothing wrong in saying this year we raised a billion more, can each county get 100 million shillings more from what you have raised? So that this National Assembly is seen to be not just supporting devolution, but sharing resources again, just not just horizontally, but also vertically when things are better, Mr. Speaker. Be because we're in this together as a people. We're in this together as a country. When the counties are doing well, the national government will do well. Mr. Speaker, something has been talked about here that I must talk about. That as we seek now to grow the economy, stabilize the economy, Mr. Speaker, agriculture is still the backbone of this country. There is something we missed out on that hurts agriculture so much today. Someone mentioned it earlier, remember when I mentioned it earlier about the extension services, Mr. Speaker. If we don't extend enough, I wish we had money in this particular bill for conditional grants to counties to extend extension services to county government so that they are able to support their farmers in that regard, Mr. Speaker. I know a number of counties are giving seed. Some counties for a long time, Mr. Speaker, gave out cows, bulls, goats. But in most counties, these goats died within a week or two. Because you are giving, you are giving breeder goats to people who have never bred, bred goats in their lives. You are giving dairy cows to people who have never had dairy cows in their lives. And because we don't have dairy, dairy we don't have good extension services, Mr. Speaker, most of these cows died. There's nothing someone could do about them. And that's why I wish that we could extend more money in that regard. Mr. Speaker, finally, again on this, how I wish again you could get more money, especially from the sports fund, if possible, and again extend cultural grants to the counties to enable us to develop county, what, what we're calling constituency academies, Mr. Speaker. I shall to imagine how many people tra would travel from my place in Ugenya to come and watch a football match in Sierra at the county headquarters. How many people will travel from all the way in Lugari to come and watch football in Kakamega Stadium? How many people are going to travel all the way from Nakach and then near Nandi to go and travel to, to go and watch matches or, or, or practice in Kisumu Stadium? We need to put more money in sports. And if counties have no money, Mr. Speaker, I beg that in, in, in this assembly is able to allocate a conditional grant to these counties, develop especially county-based, ward-based, uh, ward-based sports academies that would take a, a, a account of all the sports. Basketball, sprinting, you know, um, Mr. Speaker, volleyball, netball. For those people from Western Kenya who would excel in these in this sports, it will be very good for them because this is the future of the country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, finally, I want to also request the counties as we give them this money, they must insist. The national government, let them not go into areas where national government is supposed to fund. I've been seeing counties putting so much money in bursaries for university students. For high school students, yet they know that their mandate is at the ECD level. That is the foundation of education. Fund that one first. We want to see your children having meals in school, staying in school in those villages. Don't come out here and press and tell us, oh, we have given all our students university bursaries. Yet the children who are five, six, seven years, who need their services, whose services have been devolved and not been taken care of, build enough ECDs, feed these children, make their, child, their parents feel they're part of those counties. So that, Mr. Speaker, I, some days I wonder. We had a very good system of county governance. But when people get to, gov to be governors, I don't know where their minds go. Even the best that you've had. People want to please do things for the camera. People want to please each other. I wish that we could do as leaders things that make us happy in the evening because we touch a life, because we change our lives of the people that we lead, not because we took ourselves. Mr. Speaker, I support and thank you. Ruth Odenga, Women Rep Kisumu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first, I would like to say I support uh, uh, the budget, but I'd like to make a few comments, Mr. Speaker. First of all, um, this is a very good thing that money goes down.